Hello everybody! Today I got something a little bit different for ya. We are doing the whole time warp thing again. Back to 2006 we go. I wanted to do a run it up today, however, uh, AT&T geolocation services are down, so I can't log on to Ultimate Poker. So, into the time machine we go, and I thought what better thing to visit if we could go back in the poker time machine and do more of this poker archaeology that we've been doing. What a better thing than to go back to my first ever 50-100 No Limit Texas Hold'em Heads Up session against Mike the Mouth Mattisau back in 2006. I, I remember this night still. I remember where I played. I remember how I felt. I thought it would be cool to share that with you guys. So uh, for a little bit of context, uh, back in 2006, I was a wee lad, only 19 years old. Yes, that's right. I probably had about... I'm not sure how much money I had at this point in my bankroll. It could have been anywhere from like uh, 50k to 150k. <laughs> I mean, I haven't gone back to like research it. I'm sure I could find out if I looked, but I'm not really sure. Uh, I remember being away when this had happened. This was during uh, Turning Stones poker series in August. So I remember just being in my room hanging out and I saw Mike Mattisau sitting at 50, 100, no limit. And I was like, all right, sure. <laughs> What's the worst thing that can happen? So this was uh, the highest I'd ever played. I'd played 2550 before a little bit, but hadn't had much success, much success, excuse me, so far. Um, I had played never 50, 100 or higher before. This was definitely the highest I had played. So with that, that's pretty much all the context I can give you. I hadn't met Mike yet in person. Mike, Mike and I at this point have become pretty friendly, but uh, at this point in my my universe, I'm sure I'm sure I had not met Mike yet. So with that all being said, let's uh, see how we do here. Let's let's take a look, huh? All right, let's get this hand going. So Mike, uh, you can already see that I bought in for 4K instead of 8K. Mike had 8K and I sat with 4K. I think yeah, I must have sat with 4K. So uh, I <laughs> at this point in my life, I would never do this to somebody who's sitting with 8K. Just sit with 4K and be like, let's play heads up. Like I would usually buy in for 8K. Um, but at this point, you know, I figured, hey, why not? Four thousand dollars is more than enough. So, all right, there we go. So, Mike raised to, to three hundred here on the button, and I think a six offsuit is certainly fine to defend. Let's see what two thousand six Jake Carver decides to do. Um, just for some more context, my Heartland Poker Tour final table was in May of this year, right? I think that's right. Was it two thousand seven? I don't even know for sure. I'm not gonna guess because I'm not. I didn't double check before I started this video, so you'll be able to find out. Because I'm sure I. Well, we could even go check ourselves, I guess. The old, <laughs> the old Heartland Poker Tour DVD. Oh, that was June. That was June two thousand seven. So that was a year, a year after this. So this was before all that, before all the other final tables. This is definitely in the beginning stages of my poker career. So I'm sure my thought process will not be, um, let's say, sublime. <laughs> All right, so with that being said, we've managed to flop ourselves bottom pair. Starting with a check seems reasonable to me, and Mike decides to check back. So at this point in my poker career, like these current days, I would almost for sure bet here. We probably have the best hand. We might could have a hand like uh, Jack-7, something like that, that he was like pot controlling. He just didn't want to bet, decided to check back, which would be fine. But we also could just have so many hands that are just giving up, you know, King-Jack, King-10, stuff like that, but has a good amount of equity that we just want to have fold now, right? So we're going to get some value, some protection. Uh, not too much value, but a little bit of value and some protection, I think, with the bet here. Let's see what I decide to do. Check. Sure. <laughs> sure, why not? So now that I've checked, I have no idea what I'm going to do against a pot size bet on the turn. For one, this makes almost no sense. Like, what am I do? You check back flop and then pots the turn? Eh, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Like, um, so... It's, it's a little suspicious, though, but puts our exact hand quite in a cage, you know, because what do we do? Check call and then, like, check prey? So I, maybe I just fold now. I just assume Mike checked back, like, a 7 or an 8 or something like that. But I actually kind of think that this might be... Um, this might be weak by Mike, but I have no idea what I decided back in the day. Currently, current days, I would never check. <laughs> I would probably just bet. But if I checked and then he potted, I think I would just fold. Let's see what I decide to do. All right. I say, no thank you. All right, sorry about that. I didn't have the hand set in order. <laughs> Fix that now. <laughs> okay, so uh, very next hand, four eight of hearts on the button. I decide to limp, which is 
crazy and not good. <laughs> it's definitely not good. Uh, yeah, sure, limping buttons before it's suited. Sure, why not? So Mike decides to bet $200 here, which uh, I would assume I'm going to attack with a raise, but, you know, anything is possible in 2006. I would like to see myself raise. All right, and Mike folds. Interesting hand, besides the pot fold, but all right, back to even. I assume we'll be folding here, do send off suit. Not really sure why I limped there. I don't particularly remember having some like, I'm gonna limp a lot construct strategy, but it looks like that's what I decided to do for some reason. I did it again here. Not really sure what my logic was <laughs> in doing that. Uh, but you know, I was still at this point in poker career, kind of on like a little bit of like a poker life raft. Like I wasn't, I didn't have, I don't think I had developed enough like close friendships that were like super good at either heads up or um, just like poker in general at this point in my life. So I'm sure like a lot of the strategies that I had developed were self-constructed. So things like limping the button, I was like, probably just like, oh, let's try limping the button. And then, you know, I don't, I'm don't. i sure it wasn't like a, a thing that I was particularly, um, let's say, like not necessarily proud of, but not something that I had like built, tested, vetted, and said, this is a great strategy. It was more like a thing I'm sure I was just like trying, you know. Pretty good flop for us here with three, four puppy dog feet. I would imagine we're going to raise, get it in. Mike decides just to pot for us. And I think when, once he opened pots like this, I think... Uh, I think shoving is fine. You know, we could raise smaller, but what's the point? You know, we only have $3,200 and there's 1200 already in there. So making it 2K does the same thing as shoving. Although maybe making it like 2100 looks a little bit stronger. But, you know, it, it seems fine just to ship it in there. So sweet, sweet $448 in profit right now. Decide to limp again with the 610 offsuit. <laughs> sure. All right. Sweet. I hadn't pre-reviewed these hands before we started this, by the way. I uh, I just knew Ultimate Poker wasn't going to let me play today, so I was like, okay, I guess uh, I guess we got to do something else. So a little bit throwback Tuesday, you know? It's not a Thursday, but it's a little thing. <laughs> okay, sure. So I uh, I limped on the button here again. I hope I'm going to bet now when Mike checks me. I decided not to bet for some crazy reason. And I'm still just like friendly poker. Sure, I'm just going to check down with Jack High. At this point, I'm assuming I'm just going to check down all the way through and uh, chop it up here with Mike against his jack six. Don't know why I just didn't bet at some point in that hand. <laughs> sure, okay. So I defend here with king five of spades. That seems reasonable enough. Interesting that Mike decides to pot it. So, <laughs> okay. So, uh, how do I feel about this hand? So... I checked Mike potted and then we had a decision as to whether or not we were going to do something aggressive or check call. So I think I just decided at this point that we probably had the best hand. You know, Mike had pot folded a couple times before, so it didn't necessarily mean a ton to me. Like I wasn't exactly sure what Mike's strategy was with potting it yet. And I'm sure I hadn't, you know, Mike Matisau is even, I, I'm not sure how he played back then to be honest, but Mike's got a, a very tough style to play against if you're... Yeah, if you're like an online kid, and I'm sure I had never played with somebody like Mike before before this match. Like, you know, I hadn't played much. I mean, I had played very little live poker. I had played very little high stakes heads up, zero high stakes heads up at this high stakes. Um, and I, I probably hadn't had a lot of experience playing with like top professionals either. So I, I'm not sure how I interpreted Mike's pot strategy back in the day, but it's it was probably something that I found um, that was new to me. That would be my that'd be my guess. So I decided to just check raise all in here. I think I just decided that Mike had enough hands that were like pair plus draw, flush draw, um, you know those kinds of things, and check raising smaller is just effectively the same thing anyway. And I kind of think that I don't actually hate this because our hand could look as weak as like you know 10 queen um you know maybe even like uh you know any kind of hand in that range maybe like queen six of hearts which is obviously not a bad hand but uh i thought there was some chance that this hand our hand would look even weaker than it is and given that we only have 4k i think it's probably close to fine maybe not the you know i'm not sure if it's optimal or perfect but it's tough to say because we don't know our opponent really super well Mike folds, so all right, we got it done. Chipping on up. <laughs> Side to limp here, sure. <laughs> Why not? Hopefully I check here when my, or bet when Mike checks to us. No, I don't want to bet with a gut shot. Why would I want to do that? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, brother. All right, so we got the job done on the turn there. 
I should have at least I should have just bet flop. I don't know what I was thinking. I have no idea what's up with the limping either. It's not something that I remember doing often at all. You know. I guess we saw it a little bit in the Heartland Poker Tour video. I did some limping out of the small blind. Um, we've seen it a couple times, but not not too often. So I think let's go back because I missed what flop action was. So Mike let out here, and I called, which I think is reasonable, probably the reasonable, most reasonable decision you can make. I turn a diamond draw, and Mike pots it. So I think I'd like to see myself call here. For one, we probably have the best hand. At least some percentage of the time we have the best hand. Mike has 10-9, 9-6, 6-5. <laughs> Maybe Mike himself turned diamonds, which is unlikely, but possible. Uh, you know, Mike just defended preflop, right? We actually min raised this hand, or did we complete? Yeah, we just called. So... Um, so Mike could have any range, an any range of hands, but probably doesn't have like a hand as good as even like Ace Jack or Ace Ten, because that hand probably would raise preflop, right? So he doesn't have too many hands that make that are super strong here. You know, if he had pocket sevens, pocket eights, pocket aces, even a hand as good as like Ace Eight suited, Ace Seven suited, he might just raise those preflop. So you have to discount those slightly. Is it possible? Of course. Is it probable? I don't think so. So uh, given that, uh, I think that we could definitely be behind to an eight of Mike's, like ace, deuce, offsuit, something like that. Um, I think those hands are reasonable. But even like ace, deuce, offsuit doesn't like really want to pot, pot, right? That hand doesn't super really want to do that. Um, but I think calling makes the most sense. What does raising really accomplish? Like, is there some chance he folds a better hand than us if we raise? Yeah, for sure, right? There's some chance he folds an eight or an ace, something like that. And um, so raising is certainly viable, but I think calling is fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with, with calling against an opponent. We're not really 100% sure of what his strategy is here. Let's see what I decide to do. I'm afraid to know. My guess is old Jake Carver called, but <laughs> who knows? Okay, we call. Let's see if we can just bink the old blue ball on the river. Oh! <laughs> it's been so long, I really wanted to ring the bell, and I didn't know if I got there, so I was excited. All right, let's see if we get a pile here. All right, Mike decides to pile it. So Mike decided to, to check pre and then pot, pot, pot. So at this point, uh, what do we think Mike Matisau has? I mean, obviously it doesn't matter. Our decision is just to go all in here, right? Uh, decision is pretty easy. But what do we think Mike has? Well, it's possible he has some kind of a bluff, right? He just thinks that we're weak and decided to give us the business here and just fire off the old one, two, three ball. That's right. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> it didn't feel rhythmic till the last attempt. Uh, so it's possible that he's just got like some combination of straight draws and he's decided just to give us the business and just give us the old one, two, three. Uh, that's certainly possible. He could have, uh, I, don't, I don't think he has a hand like two pair, like unless he has ace nine exactly and then just like bet, bet, bet and now is here. Um, but when he bets like this, it, to me, to me, the way I read this is that this either means that Mike has a really good hand or not very much. And he started this story back on the flop. So he, that, he's kind of telling the story that he either had a flush draw, which bet, 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 you know, he had some sort of like, you know, maybe ace deuce of diamonds, seven, five, uh, we have a seven of diamonds, so it can't even be that. Um, so he had some kind of diamonds, maybe... Uh, Jack 10 of diamonds, something like that. Uh, we have 10 diamonds too. So uh, six, five of diamonds, that's a hand that he could have. Um, so something like that would make some sense. But if he even had like a hand as good as two pair on the flop, don't you think that he would be a little bit concerned at this point? If he had a hand like, especially since his most likely two pair is going to be seven, eight. So that seven, eight doesn't really feel super comfortable here. So I, I don't really know how to how to interpret this exactly because I don't know Mike's strategy or Mike's thought process or anything like that. But um, I, I, this doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense to me as strong. But our decision obviously is very straightforward. We're just going to shove. But I don't know what in the world Mike Mike has here. This this seems kind of uh, kind of weird to me. Oh, all right. Let's see what he's <laughs> let's see what he's got. I thought we just would win this, but all right. Let's see. All right. Interesting, interesting. So, nice little old uh, 10K ball there. A little 10K pot. So let's let's see that river. Let's think about what it, let's think about Mike's decisions here. So Mike has 9-8 offsuit here, checks preflop which makes sense. Bet out on the flop which also makes some sense, especially if he can tr if he correctly or perhaps correctly um, figures that we would raise an ace preflop on the button. Not to say for sure we would. I'm not even sure if I would or wouldn't back in the day. But he probably 
guesses that correctly and then decides to bet 200 for straight up value. That makes sense. And then on the turn here, he probably correctly again assumes he has he is at least likely to have the best end, which he's correct about on the turn. And then on the river, we kind of hit the perfect card where he improves a two pair and we have a flush. However, when he pots it, when he pots it like when he pots it like this, I feel like his decisions have to be have to be to just bet fold, right? Like how how does Mike decide to bet call here? Like it doesn't make it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense because what do we have that is worse than nine eight that would limp pre call flop call turn shove river right unless we're doing some sort of like a bluff here and we just happen to have like ten nine or nine six or one of those types of hands and then decide to bluff you know that's the only the world that's really the only hands we can show up here with that even have an opportunity to bluff everything else is like ace ten ace jack you know if we had a hand like ace king we're just gonna call we're not gonna shove right uh, or at least he probably thinks that what's what we're gonna do so I don't really love Mike's uh, bet call here but you know we did get kind of lucky to obviously hit the perfect card in the deck to to cooler him. Little 11k pot over there. That might have been my no. The, there's no way that's my first 11k pot, but I'm sure it's uh it's probably one of my first 12 or something like that. Oh, we went back in time. All right, next hand. All right, so let's see if Mike reloads here. I'm pretty sure he might. All right, we got ourselves a heads-up match. <laughs> I continue with my limping. That's actually probably fine in this particular instance. Like, before now, it was almost for sure bad. But in this particular case, it's actually not the worst because we think Mike might be steaming. We think he might be kind of aggressive. So with a hand like this, limping and letting him raise makes some sense, right? It makes a little bit of sense. So we limped and Mike raised and then we called. We've now flopped an open ender. I think given that Mike just lost a big pot, I, I think that we are most likely going to just call here, right? I think we're a little afraid of raising because if we raise and he just has like pocket nines, he might just ship it in our face, which is not an unreasonable thing given that there are two diamonds on the board. So I think our, our best strategy here is just to call. Let's say there's like, let's say like a nine rolls off and he just has ace queen. He may check fold. That would make some sense. And we have obviously five high, which would be great with us. Uh, turn card could be like a, you know, it could be a 10 of diamonds and he might check fold like a black ace king, something like that. So I think calling makes the most sense here. Raising doesn't seem like it would make, uh, make the most money. That's for sure. Do decide to call. King of Diamonds is a pretty good card for Mike. I mean, he's obviously going to be a little afraid of us having a flush, but uh, king is going to be better for him than it is for us. Um, generally speaking, so let's see what he decides to do. So I think at this point against the pot, we have to just fold. Uh, maybe if I had an enormous bankroll and, and really like was feeling my oats, I could consider shoving this turn here. <laughs> like it's at least somewhat possible that he's like steaming and just like clicking buttons and his bet folding on this turn but it's ten thousand dollars to a 19 year old kid living at my parents house you know <laughs> like i can't you know i don't think i'll be bluff shoving here but maybe something miraculous occurs no logic rules the day i'm afraid and uh that one goes over to mike mike decides to limp now all right <laughs> we're all just friends here limping buttons sure all right so Mike decides to check back on the flop. I make a stab here, which I cannot imagine possibly works. When you limp the button and then check back this flop, you're almost for sure not like, you're not going to fold this turn almost ever. Like, I almost would, I would bet that this $125 more likely than not goes over to Mike, and I have no information whatsoever as to whether or not it does. I just think this is a, a bluff that just doesn't work very often. Shows me, shows me I know. <laughs> I was like, uh, I, th I didn't say it never worked. I'll defend that a little bit. I didn't say it never worked. I just think that it works not that often. You know, it works less often than, than it needs to work. Um, maybe I had some devious plans of river damage, but against in the mood that I think Mike might have been in, I don't know if it necessarily made a lot of sense. Again, I decided to limp the button here. So we're doing like an investigation into 2006 button limping. This is about this video. This is the the Dateline, the Dateline NBC <laughs> expose into button limping. Apparently, sure, whatever. All right, so we're doing so far so good. We've uh, managed to run it up from 4K to ten thousand three hundred dollars. Not the worst day's work so far. About to get a little bit better with two eights here. Decided just to call. I could re-raise. Obviously, that would have been certainly fine. But I decided just to call. Uh, yeah, I think that's, you know, it's just a matter of like, 
I mean, you're, you're, it's a matter of like your entire strategy to the heads up match, right? Like what your plan is for this and that and everything else. So I think calling is fine. Raising would also be fine. Depends on your entire strategy, perspective, stuff like that. So we're lucky enough to bink the old three of a kind, and Mike decides to pot, which is very sweet of him. So I think there's only really one decision here, and that's the check raise not fold. You know, when Mike pots like this on a board this connected, if has if he has any like solid piece, he might just ship it in our face. He could be steaming right now, right? Which is at least somewhat possible. By the way, new microphone. We didn't even talk about it yet. I forgot to mention it. We've uh, we've ran up the microphone from the old old Nessie, which has been which has been uh, I've been recording off of that for probably since these days in uh, 2006 finally upgraded to real mic cable yeah that's right so uh so yeah a little professional upgrade in here anyway back to this whole poker thing so i uh think we'd win the check raise if i check call i would be shocked you know there are so many cards that can come that will make us uncomfortable and i'm uh, relaxing i like to relax you know i don't need to be uncomfortable so i feel like you know any kind of 10 10 jack diamond uh, they're all, they're all make us, and there's not a ton of them, but there's at least some hands that are, that, that make me uncomfortable or some cards that'll make me uncomfortable and might shut Mike down. Like if he has ace queen and it turns to 10, it's just so disastrous for us. Right. So given that he potted, he raised pre and potted, he's already shown strength. So I think it makes sense to try to come after him with a check raise somewhere in the in the range of like 1800 is probably correct. 2k seems fine. You know I mean? It seems fine. I mean, is it exact optimal precision betting? No, but it seems like it's in the ballpark. And Mike decides to fold. So interesting that he's capable of, of bet folding for pot on that board. Definitely worth noting. Finally take a handoff. All right. <laughs> there, there you go. Finally finally take a handoff there. All right. Defending with three deuce, off suit, or three deuce suited in the big blind. Sure. You know, why not? <laughs> I think I would have preferred myself to either re-raise or fold that hand, but apparently I didn't feel that way. All right, I'm happy to see myself limp here. Uh, if I'm going to limp with all his other hands, I should be limping hands this good. Mike decides to check. Now he decides to lead. So 2013, Jay Carver sees this and is like, all right, well, we have to call because ace-queen is a beautiful hand. How do we say no to ace-queen? We just limped preflop. You know, we could definitely be ahead. I don't know if 2006, Jay Carver appreciates the value of ace-high as much as I do now, you know, and your old age, you appreciate things like ace and king high. I don't know if I appreciated that as a whippersnapper. So let's see what I decide to do here. No appreciation. <laughs> no respect. <laughs> no respect. All right. So off to the next hand we go. I don't know what to say. I didn't appreciate it back in the day. I just didn't appreciate it. All right. Decide to limp fold to Mike Massa. Okay, I guess that's fine. I mean, we did have a hand that was pretty shitty, and I guess we can limp fold sometimes, but I, I wouldn't have hated to see myself either limp call. Obviously, raising would be fine, but apparently I'm not in the mood. Although sometimes I do raise, so I'm not really sure. You know, I have a feeling that my... I have a feeling that my thought process here was very much like a bit of a lottery. It was like a roulette wheel. I was like, all right, what are we going to do today? Spin, <laughs> raise, call, or fold. Spin the wheel. <laughs> like, that's kind of how it feels. This kind of works a little bit, I think. So I defended here with four deuce suited, which, again, I'm not really a big fan of. Flop went check, check. And then on the turn, I decided to lead, which makes some sense because you check back on flop. And then Mike uh, pots it, and we just have to fold. I think that makes some sense. Interesting that he checked back flop and then potted on turn. He could have any kind of number of draws, stuff like that. So against the guy who, I mean, against the guy whose bet sizing seems to be very like either pot or, you know, it's like pot or not. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's pot or not here on uh, whatever this name of this video will be. So uh, I think that against the guy who does that, you're going to have to kind of make some decisions in terms of like, if if he's really like almost having like a binary bet size. By the way, Mike's game has evolved tremendously since these days, of course, you know. But uh, I think that when when somebody is either potting or you know calling or folding, you know, I think against a guy like that, we're going to be a little bit more. We need to be a little bit tighter, I think, and I think it, it encourages us to, to take more stabs with our bet sizing. Like it encourages us to be smaller with our bet sizing if our if our opponent is is like just blasting it when they decide to bet, right? Because it, it encourages us to make small bluffs. Because if he wants to rebluff, he's just going to pot it. It encourages us to make small bets with our value hands also, because if he wants to attack us, he'll just pot it, right? So if he's on that strategy, then I think the the best way to do it is almost to like jab a lot and like bait a lot, right? 
I like that. This is my feeding the ducks. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> sure. Whatever, Jake Carver. <laughs> whatever, Jake Carver. All right. <laughs> so Mike limped. I raised and he called. I bet on the flop and again he called. Now, once again, the king turn card. I'm not necessarily sure how I felt about this turn card back in the day. Like these days, I would say, oh, the king is probably fine for me because, you know, there's some chance he might even fold a better hand than ours. Although, you know, very tiny chance he'll fold a jack. But I think that, oh, uh, I don't know, actually. It depends on your opponent. But I think I would like to see myself bet on this turn, uh, you know, because we'll be, we'll be betting here. It's almost like a, it's almost like a merge right if you're really into heavy poker content like imagine that imagine that we're going to be imagine that we show up here with we don't know what we have you know we we're here with like all sorts of ace queen ace 10 suited you know we're here with all sorts of hands that were good enough to raise preflop and good enough to bet on the flop which pretty much just means that there are two cards and uh and now here we are on the turn so given that the king is a scary turn card we're going to be betting with a lot of hands that show up here right almost every hand that has been on this wagon that has made it here is going to want to bet if they don't have it especially but even if they do have it they kind of want to bet so i think tens should just be bet because we're, we're betting with everything here and there's some chance he'll call us with worse still he could put us on diamonds ace queen queen 10 he could put us on all sorts of hands and call with like eight nine he can cost with ten nine seven nine you know all sorts of things like that that we're actually ahead of and once in a while he actually folds better especially by the river but i'm not too concerned about that that's a pretty narrow aspect back in the back in these days i'm not really sure there's some chance that i end up check calling which would be fine as long as i don't check fold i'll be okay with what i did here betting seems cool with me and mike decides to call all right so here we are now on the river 32 hundo in the pot I think we've got a decision between check calling and bet folding, right? We're not going to be bet calling. That seems silly. So I think the let's 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 take a walk. <laughs> let's take a walk. Would uh, what makes the most what makes the most money here, right? If we check, if we check, what does he do? We check, and he has what hands does he have? He has some sort of straight draws. He has eights. He has sixes. Sometimes he has jacks. He has a couple kings. Right? He could have king queen. He could have a king 10 something like that and he just wanted to call flop he could have king sometime uh if we check if we check there's definitely some chance he decides to bluff some chance he decides to bluff yeah he, he can have missed draws seven nine got there but he could have ten nine he could have queen ten um he has he has enough draws that we could check and give him a chance to bluff for sure uh, there's also some chance that if we bet, the Mike could decide to do something crazy and just stick it in our face and just blast it, you know, and just say, all right, I'm all in, and then we're just folding the best hand, which would suck. Especially since how much money is in the pot, you know, generally, it would really suck to bet, like, 2K here and have Mike shove, and then we're just like, oh, fuck, and have to fold. So I think that check check calling makes makes some sense betting is okay because of the fact that he could call us with hands like if we think mike has pocket nines an eight pocket sevens a six you know if we think mike has more hands that want to call then we'd want to bet you know if mike has the, the decision comes down to this right how many pairs does mike have versus how many hands that will bluff if we check and uh, or you know we can pot control a little bit against that if we also check so i'm a little afraid of checking because i think there's some chance that michael just bet three thousand dollars which would kind of suck but i don't know what i'd do back in 2006 like this is a pretty advanced uh thought process and i'm a hundred percent sure that my logic was not good enough to like really suss out what the correct play was back in 2006 so <laughs> i spun the mental roulette wheel <laughs> and uh and let's see what i ended up guessing to do i mean i'm sure i wasn't like quite guessing but i i certainly feel like my thought process these days is a lot better at figuring out what is likely the best thing to do than back then when i, I was probably like well i've got two tens uh, it was much more like gutty, you know, it was, uh, it was, a uh, much more gut instinct play back in the day by me. So I decided to check, which I think is actually probably the better decision, but, uh, let's see what Mike decides to do here. Check. So we almost for sure win if Mike's checking back. I mean, he would lose to like some jacks that he has, but I feel good about it when he checks back. All right. So we do lose his hand to, to Jack Nine Studio, which makes sense. A little surprised that Mike didn't want to bet, um, but... I don't know how long he thought about it because we don't see time. So 
I'm not sure how long he thought about it before he decided to check. You know, there's some re logic to betting just because of the fact that, you know, we probably don't have better than a jack and then would play our hand that way and then check, you know. But uh, if he's going with his pot or not strategy, then you don't really want to pot with that hand because that's going to drive out uh, so many of the hands you want calling, you know. So, uh, yeah, okay, interesting hand. Decided to limp here on the button with 7-9 offsuit. Mike decides to check. And I assume that will be that. All right, so it's uh, the revenge, the revenge of Mikey over there, <laughs> you know? Mike Mattisau strikes back, sure. All right, it's a poker game, boys and girls. I don't know why I'm deciding to raise sometimes. Like, it feels very uh, spar spontaneous. It feels very, like, unconstructed. I was just, like, clicking buttons to some degree. I, I think, like, there was no great strategy to, to what I was doing, I believe. All right. So we managed to flop, or we started with a pair. We still have a pair. Decided to check fold, which I think makes some sense. Enough sense for me. Interesting, then. I had no idea that I did this. Like, I had remembered, I had always remembered that I played Mike heads up, and it was my first, like, 50, 100 heads up session, my first high stakes session. Like, I definitely, for sure, remembered the session. But I had no idea how much limping I did. Kind of interesting. Pretty good flop for us with queen four of spades. Check raising makes sense. Oh, all right. Well, <laughs> I mean, nothing really to say. It seems all pretty standard to me. It's uh, kind of wild, though. 200, 800, 2600. I'm, I'm all in. <laughs> I'm all in. <laughs> I want to watch myself when I do it, but I can't. It's part of the thing. I have to look. All right. Well, let's see how this works out for us. Oh, oh fold all right interesting interesting so that's really kind of uh weird i wonder what made mike decide to re-raise there i wonder what he saw or thought he thought he perceived that we would be just check raising and then uh folding there by the way this is one of the disadvantages of the potter not strategy like you know because yeah it puts a lot of pressure on us but he could just make it 2100 here and save himself 500 dollars and put us in the same amount of pressure that we would be receiving with 2600 or very close to it you know it's one of those like you know yeah potting puts a lot of pressure on people and makes makes you a little bit tougher to read because you know you're always just potting so it's tough to detect like it doesn't give away it doesn't give away much bet sizing information right however i think that a finesse type of a strategy where you're like catering your bets to be like you're designing them you're designing your bets much like we design cages here we're cage masters here at run it up right that's what we do we design cages so i feel like designing bets that make sense and are constructed to accomplish a certain thing makes a little bit more sense than just being like than taking the old hammer out and just like you know that's right that's a hammer boys and girls that is right all right, so ship that little old pot there. A7 offsuit. Now I decide to raise. Sure. All right. Made it to pair status. Mike decides to check. I would consider, okay, I decide to check. Sure. <laughs> sure, why not? All right, so at this point, I would really like to see myself bet. I mean, he might check to us twice. We almost for sure had the best hand. Let's get a little bit of value and protection, you know, please. Oh, my God. What am I doing? Now what? Now what am I going to do? Check? Now what am I going to do? Oh my god, if I check back here and made no money. Oh my god, what a fish. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Middle pair? No, no. <laughs> no. Let's see another card. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> let's, let's see a showdown. Okay, great. Excellent poker. Don't, don't do that, kids. If you make a pair, be proud, you know? Put a bet out there. You know, protect your hand. Guess we get paid a little bit. It's tough to make pairs, you know? Get, get your money's worth. God, that was sad. All right. King and queen. Another call from us. Mike decides to bet. So we've got ourselves a decision path here between calling and raising. I think that we haven't really got a dynamic where we want to, like, raise, get it in, you know? And not necessarily raise, get it in. We could definitely raise here. I think raising here to, like, five, 600 puts pressure on Mike. And uh, we would just call if he re-raises, which is fine. You know, we could definitely take that path. That's certainly viable. Calling is fine as well. It all depends on what our general strategy is and how we perceive Mike. Uh, let's see what we decide to do here. Calling seems reasonable enough. So I have a feeling that this is going to be a, a turn card that Mike's going to give us the business on. Like, I have a feeling he's going to bet. 
uh, 600 here and probably bet 1800 on the river. That's just my guess. This is what's going to happen here. With our hand being as good as it is, we probably can't fold unless the river is like the six of clubs, you know, or even just like, you know, there is there are some river cards we'll fold to, but our hand is just so good here in a heads up game against Mike. I don't think there's any chance we can get off this without some like real encouragement. Oh, what? <laughs> oh my god, this is terrible. This is really bad. I mean, like, I don't understand what at all this accomplishes. Like, this is just literally spewing. Like, it's literally just spewing. Let's say Mike has a hand, like, ace. If Mike ever has a hand worse than ours and just has, like, a flush draw and ships it in our face, oh my god, it's such a catastrophe. It's such a catastrophe if Mike just decides to ship it in our face here and we're just like, herfty der fold. <laughs> Alright, I guess we're beat. And then we're not. Like, this, I mean... I think my thought process was something like, okay, I probably have the best hand here, which is true. I probably do have the best hand here. Um, but if we don't, we're just giving him another $1,000. And if we do, we're, we're, I mean, we're, huh, I don't know. If if we do have the best hand, we're going to get a little bit of value out of this sometimes. If Mike decides, let's say Mike has King Jack with the Jack of Clubs. Mike could play this hand exactly the same way, bet he would call our raise here, and then he's going to check on the river. Let's say the river is a deuce. He's going to check on the river, and then what? We're going to bet another 4K? Probably not, right? We're going to probably check. We're going to be kind of afraid a lot of the time to do that, right? So we make a very similar amount of money, I think, by just calling turn and then making a decision on the river versus doing this where we potentially get blown off of the hand and uh, could make some terrible mistakes here if Mike decides to just crush us and put us in the cage. Oh my god, if Mike shoves here, I'm going to literally puke. I mean, okay. <laughs> Maybe not immediately, but it's coming. Oh my god, I'm almost like afraid to hit play. All right, Mike just calls. Whew. <laughs> That's a bullet dodging there. So pretty good river card for us. I mean, if Mike blasts it out here for a pot, uh, it's going to be brutal, but check. Okay, but this is exactly the situation where I'm talking about before. So let's say, you know, what are we doing now? Like, what in the world are we doing now? I mean, this is like one of those decisions where I put myself in the cage. <laughs> you know, like, who needs to be put in the cage when we're putting ourselves in the cage? So, I mean, I think this just makes... This just makes like very little sense, and uh, I mean, I, I don't, I don't have the slightest clue what I'm gonna do here. You know, we almost for sure have the best hand, and there's a chance that Mike will call with worse, right? Mike could even call as bad as like Ace Eight offsuit if he has the Ace of Clubs, or like there are so many hands that Mike could call with, but he could have flushes, he could have some full houses, like he could have just had two sevens on the turn or two eights to be, you know, equally reasonable. He could have a hand like that and then bet call turn think uh, being afraid of us having a flush or a straight and then makes a full house in the river and then checks and then what check rate you know it's just there it's a very dangerous game that we're playing here and i feel like there would be <laughs> i feel like it was just not not the best way to play this pot let's see what we decide to do here i would guess that we check but maybe old jay carver has got the hero the hero bones in him no it checks back Okay, yeah. I was like, wait, bet? No. All right. Well, you know, <laughs> it, we ended up making less money than we would have made if we had just called turn. You know, we call turn, river is a five. He probably bets 1,800 or something like that, and we actually would have made an extra, uh, we would have made, we would have got an extra, right, he bet 600. It would have been 618. We would have got 24. We just got 16. So we, would, we got an extra $800 here if we had just called turn. That's unfortunate. Sorry. Next end. All right, we'll play. This will probably be the last hand of the match for now. All right, so defended here with ace three offsuit. Mike decides to check back. So we probably have the best hand here, at least some percentage of the time. I think we could arguably bet here. Mike's folded the bets on the turn before like this, and I think we get some protection, some a little bit of value. Sometimes they'll call with like 10-9, queen-10, stuff like that. I decide to check instead, which makes us just basically bet fold, which is why checking is kind of bad. So now what do I do? <laughs> check fold, I guess? I guess so. <laughs> All right. Sure. Why not? All right. Let's do a turn and chat. Let's talk. To, let's talk to the, let's talk about what we just saw here. Let's talk about it. All right. See you later, camera. All right. So that was a uh, session. How'd you guys like it? If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget, let me know in the comments below. It's a little something different. 
I'll be back playing some Run It Up. I know you guys were jonesing for some Run It Up action, but hey, it's not my fault. Blame at and you know, I'm not the... <laughs> I can't control all that stuff. So anyway, thanks so much for watching as always. Don't forget, if you're not subscribed already, subscribe. We have fun here. We make videos almost every single day. Subscribe and join Team Run It Up. You could be a cage master yourself, you know? Be <laughs> That's going to be the slogan, you know? It's like, harness your inner cage master. Something like that. Just subscribe. All you got to do. Anyway, thanks so much for watching as always, guys, and I will see you back for more very soon. Peace.